Well, it's certainly been a busy week in the land of AI. This week, as I'm sure you're aware, ChatGPT5 launched yesterday. So is it a bad donkey made by a smart honky? Or is it just a piece of crap made by a billionaire sap? Well, after analyzing GPT-5's benchmarks, watching AI agents buy stock and uh, build apps for the past three or four months or five months or six months, I'd say we crossed a line yesterday and there's no going back, of course. And we know that. We know everything's just going to keep advancing. Well, we're never going to get the best and baddest uh, version of these LLMs. You know, those are kept for the elite. Well, that sounds like a conspiracy theory, but they can't release those because they could probably kill us all. That doesn't sound like a conspiracy theory at all. <laughs> anyway, the numbers that are boring are pretty impressive. Chat GPT-5 put up 94.6% uh, on the AIM 2025 mathematics or AME or AIME, AME, what you going to do? 74.9% on the SWE bench software engineering that we all use daily. 88.4% on the GPQA Diamond PhD level, level, PhD level science questions. It's right there with your crossword puzzles. And it achieves this with 50 to 80% less output tokens than OpenAI 03. So what that means is it's, it's more accurate while thinking less. It's working smarter, not harder, as the old saying goes. The impact was immediate, with some of it happening just on rumors of what ChatGPT5 would be capable of. Bill Bal Balderaz, CEO of consulting firm Futurity, for Futurity, had already made his decision weeks ago. We're not hiring summer interns this year. Well, damn, I was hoping for a job. We're using ChatGPT instead. Well, that's great. At Carlisle, the global investment firm, junior employees who used to spend weeks evaluating deals, yeah, they're being replaced by GTP5, analyzing documents and requests, can request information and, and make a recommendation in minutes. Mogo Dot, former chief business officer at Google X, spelled it out this week. The idea that AI will create jobs is 100% crap. End quote. His quote. His new AI startup, built with three people, he says that work would have required 350 developers a month's worth of work in the past. 49% of Gen Z job hunters believe AI has already reduced the value of their degrees. While unemployment sets at 4% nationally, recent college grads face over 6% unemployment. The jobs are disappearing in real time. While GPT-5 was launching... Twitter user Savik demonstrated our new reality. Why does everything have to have a hard name for me to say? They gave an AI agent called Perplexity Comment. That's not. 500 bucks of real money and said, research ETFs and pick stocks for today. The AI took control of the browser, navigated to Robinhood, searched tickers, and executed buy orders. Real money, real trades, real consequences. And Savick, he sat there, the, she, he, she, they watched it happen. This is happening while finance is having what one insider called a nervous breakdown. The largest IPO of 2025 is literally a Bitcoin treasury company, a company that holds crypto and sells shares. That's the entire business model. That's what they do. Meanwhile, 94% of finance, financial firms say AI is now central to their operational strategy. That's present tense central to their AI strategy or to their operational strategy. The financial media celebrates AI democratizing investing while ignoring the core question, who's liable when your AI agent loses your life savings? Perplexity would just say we're a browser tool, Robin Hood. Hey, we processed a legitimate order. And you would say, but I didn't mean to buy $10,000 worth of GameStop. Ramp raised $500 million at a $22.5 billion valuation just 45 days after their last round of capital funding. Why? Well, by 2026, AI agents will handle 85% of manual reviews. By 2027, finance runs in parallel with 30 times productivity. By 2028, autonomous systems with human oversight. Us human types are going to be quality control and nothing more, guys. That's it. And we've kind of seen this coming. We've talked about it. We're there to just make sure they don't, the LLMs, the agents don't screw up and, and, and buy Blockbuster or 
GameStop. While Silicon Valley celebrated ChatGPT5, China's DeepSeek R1 has become the most liked model of all time on Hugging Face. No press tour, no keynote, open weights and open science that American researchers immediately started building on. Well, of course they did. It's open source. For the first time in history, American AI is being built on Chinese foundations. I don't use those. Um, I'm not a fan. Doesn't mean you don't have to be, or you can't be, but, you know, they're watching our data. You know, if we're building on what they created, they only created it to use it to watch what we're doing. I mean, it, it seems simple to me. Man, I sound like a conspiratist today, don't I? Well, you know, it's one thing to say you're a conspiracy theorist, but when things start pointing that way, you're kind of, you'd kind of be an idiot if you don't think that, right? Or maybe I'm just saying that to make myself feel better. Between 2016 and 2020, the U.S. was the global leader in open source AI. Google, OpenAI, Stanford, they shared everything. Wives, girlfriends, weed, you name it. The transformer architecture that powers GPT, born from this open culture. Now American companies lock everything behind APIs while China shares their breakthroughs. American scientists starved for open models build on Chinese foundations. Hey, if you can't build on something that's closed, build on something that works and works well. And right now that's Chinese innovations. Mark Zuckerberg said something interesting this week. He claimed Meta, Meta is seeing glimpses of AI self-improvement. When pushed for details in an investor call, he wouldn't say anything more or elaborate one bit. Sam Altman told employees that Meta tried to poach his team with $100 million packages, which we know about. One researcher was offered a chief scientist position and turned it down. We're watching an arms race where the ammunition is human talent and the casualties are American workers. You know, we can kind of connect the dots here. Three stories, there's one pattern. G GPT-5 is replacing white-collar workers, AI agents controlling our money, China winning the open source war while American companies fight over scraps. You can look at the accelerating timeline, 2020, AI assists humans, 23, AI augments humans, 25, AI replaces humans, uh, 2027, AI manages humans, by 2030, who really knows? Fellow Gen Xers were uniquely screwed again, it's looking like. We're too young to retire before this hits. You know, some of us have 15 years, maybe less, 20 years, maybe more. We're told we're too old to completely retrain. I mean, who is 55 years old wants to learn how to code when ChatGPT is here and can code better than us anyway? So we're the perfect targets for automation, experienced enough to be expensive, not senior enough to be safe. Right now, a retiring boomers from their CEO positions are not hiring um, Gen Xers. They're hiring the generations after us who were raised on the technology. That's who's replacing the boomers. Not us Gen Xers, you know, last episode I said we've stood in line like we were told to and told to wait and good things would come. We're getting skipped. Imagine that. Only 40% of us even know what a stable coin is. Now we need to understand AI agents that trade our retirement funds. The boomers, you know, they're just going to retire. The millennials and later, they grew up on the digital ways. They'll survive. We're the last analog generation in a kind of a digital extinction event. So it's time, people. It's time to learn all you can and pivot. Learn and pivot or give up. Your choice. And a lot of people will say, what's the point? And give up. You know, uh, I'm not one of those type of people. Uh, even if it means I only can stay employed maybe six months more, that's six months more worth of income. Um, so it's your choice, you know. We've been learning our whole careers. Things have changed dramatically from the time we started work until now. So, I mean, we're used to it. Give it another 10 years or whatever, and you can retire. And, uh, you know, the other generations that are brought up on this stuff should be able to survive. Of course, if, if one of these days the technology is such where we don't have to work, well, I have to deal with it then. So this week was a convergence. GPT-5 launched and made human expertise optional. AI agents took control of financial uh, decisions. 
China proved that American AI dominance is over. Mo Gadot said it best, AI already does what humans used to do. Even the jobs you think are safe, doctors, teachers, CEOs, oh, Bill Gates says they're all replaceable. Based on what launched yesterday, you know, looks like he may be being a little bit conservative. The future certainly arrived yesterday, took control of your browser and started making decisions you, you used to make, I used to make. The only question left, what are us human types for now anyway? And on that thought, have a great weekend. I'll see you next episode. <laughs>